Hello and welcome to Poly Talks. I'm your host, Jason Clark, and we're here with Tim Godanier. Hi, Tim. Hi, how are you? Um, we just have a few questions for you about the upcoming, you know, Toronto City election. You're running for Ward 13? I am. Yeah, that's great. So, um, how did you get into community activism? How did you get started in politics? It's funny, I, uh, I've always had this strange uh, calling to, to give back and I, I just, I, I've run my own business for the last 13 years and I've always gotten uh, excited helping young entrepreneurs and things like that. So I just started, every time I see something wrong with the society and anything in the area or around wherever I am, it's, I, I feel the need to find solutions for ideas and I've got this creative thing I've got to, I've got to use. So I came to the table as a, as a counselor. Great. So <clears throat> like, why did you first decide to run for city councillor? Well, it seemed like a logical second step for me. Uh, my first step, I ran a, uh, I'm president right now of my condo corporation, uh, which is over at uh, River City. It's been amazing seeing that come to life. So seeing that area, Canary District, um, just got me really excited. It started to take me to the next step. I wanted to see if I could handle it. Uh, three years of volunteer <laughs> chairing a board for your, for owners of condos was uh, definitely a, a wake up for me. So it's, it's good. It, it lets you see how it's going to be. So. That's great. So you have a perspective where you've been, you know, helping people in your community to, you know, organize things. So what do you think the role of a city councillor will be? And do you, what do you think you'll enjoy most about that role? Yeah, it's, it's, bringing, it's bringing your ward, which has expanded greatly now, uh, it's bringing your ward to, uh, together. And I, uh, I'm big on community focus um, through social interaction and events, um, all sorts of stuff. I want to do better with the green spaces and, and bring special events to areas that should be highlighted throughout the city. The East is kind of an under, uh, underappreciated beauty. So uh, that's obviously it's my home area of the ward. But uh, I see bringing this, you know, just bringing the better, better quality of life, better accessibility throughout the ward. Uh, I've got a lot of ideas. That's great. So what do you think are going to be some of the challenges to meet those, you know, those desired goals that you have? The size of the ward is going to be a big one. Um, we're, all, we're all in for a little bit of a surprise because no one's really done this before. Um, as everyone knows, uh, he changed the lines. Mm -hmm. So when I first signed up for Ward 21, it encompassed this area as well. But now I'm all the way up to Bloor with this new Ward 13. So it's, and over to Bay. So it's, it's, it's a bigger challenge. You've got a lot of communities that are very, very different from one another. Bloor Yorkville to the village to Regent Park to uh, Old Town all the way through Canary and Distillery. It's, it's very different. Yeah, it's a much bigger ward now. So you, talk, yeah. so you talked about some of your goals. Mm -hmm. What are three of the most, um, some of your, your, your accomplishments that you've, uh, or your successes in your career so thus far? Yeah, I run a key to the city. It's uh, called Toronto Key to the City. Um, it's basically created a program that uh, gives back through loyalty, through uh, VIP benefits. Mm -hmm. So we've sent business, a lot of business from our, our key holders who basically purchase our keys and then we showcase the best of the city and they're able to go and experience those places like restaurants and spas and nightlife and entertainment. Uh, so where, I, where I've seen that is I'm, I'm able to take some of that business acumen and, and my need to, to give back. Like I said, I'm big on young entrepreneurship and I really want to join a committee and create committees that will help foster that and build it. That's great. So, you know, that's some of the goals and things that you've had and some of the accomplishments that you've had. So, as you said earlier, the wards are now smaller. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's... Bigger. Or, sorry, bigger. I was going to say. Yeah, <laughs> bigger. So, you know, um, Premier Ford yes. has made some decisions that have impacted the ward. You know, how do you feel about those decisions and how do you think they're going to impact your job if you're elected as city councillor? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, to be honest, when I first heard it, obviously it was a big shock. We weren't ready for that. There was no one ready for that. Um, after giving it careful consideration and why I re-entered the race uh, for Ward, tw uh, Ward 13, uh, the reason being, I, I think that it could be it could be interesting. I mean, I think there's going to need to be neighborhood communities uh, setting up associations to help f feed that, similar to what LA and other cities have done. So they have subcommittees underneath the councillors that feed back up to in a funnel kind of thing to the councillor and allow communities to actually have their voice heard properly. Because with this kind of size of a ward and so many communities, like I said, the diversity of them all, it, they're going to need to definitely have some subcommittee set up and that will be a focus of mine. There's, there has to be. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. So 
do you feel what do you feel is most important issues facing your constituents considering that the ward is now much larger mm -hmm. what do you think are some of the most you have a much larger ward more people more constituents what do you think are some of the most important issues facing your constituents accessibility uh, is one of my biggest uh, platform um, reasons for why I ran uh, one of the things I actually did I got challenged actually uh, by a local advocate uh, Emily Dagg and she uh, took me around literally in a wheelchair. I rode a wheelchair for six and a half hours around the entire ward. I got to learn about, well, hey, what's going on? Like, what are we, what are we doing with accessibility? And it's, it's scary. So there's a lot, a lot of things I want to fix, uh, from the subway systems to uh, even just streets to you name it. I mean, it's, it's, it's a mess out there. Okay. I got, I got my eyes open. So that's one of the items. Uh, the other thing is obviously affordable housing. Uh, I don't want to sound like a broken record. Everybody's yep. talking about affordable housing, um, social housing. Um, personally, I, I think there needs to be better ways to do development, whereas it's a better give back from developers to communities. So be that through, you know, social housing, affordable housing, which I want to relabel, uh, adaptive living, which is another topic. Um, I actually, I'd like to see more give back from the developers. I'm going to push for that. I think they should be investing in the parks and the community. If they want to build a high rise, you want to make a lot of money, you got to pay to play. And mm -hmm. I think it's fair. So give back to community in terms of housing or parks and, and just general repair. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. So, so how can the citizens or the constituents in this ward be more involved in these issues? How can they have their voice heard? I'm really approachable. Uh, one thing I've done on all my flyers and you might have gotten some is uh, we've actually put uh, my cell phone on there, so I'm reachable. Um, if I were elected, I obviously will make sure I am still reachable. Uh, there will be people that obviously still be able to handle it, but uh, I think it, we just have to be available. And I think people need to speak up and just say what they want. And again, another reason why I want to push for those neighborhood kind of communities and subcommittees, I think it's important to, to be able to hear those voices because eventually they will drown out. Even if, we, no matter how much we try, yeah. with the size of this ward, it's, we're going to need some help. There's yeah. no question. Great. So and maybe BIAs could even step up and, and take that role in the interim. That's good too. So um, you've addressed the idea that you know your constituents, you have much more constituents. You know you have much more voices to be heard and yep. things like that. And that's great. Is there anything else that you would like to say to your constituents? You know for the upcoming election, getting them out to vote. You got to vote. It's your right. If you don't vote, you're uh, you're you're basically standing by the wayside and. And the thing I hate most is people who talk and don't do. Mm -hmm. And I'm a doer, so I respect doers. And I think most people respect doers. And I think most people love to be a doer. So if you're, if you're able to vote, you should go out and vote. And uh, it's important. If you're not able to vote, encourage those around you to vote that you know that can vote. And uh, hopefully they'll get your day to vote soon. Thanks a lot, Tim. And thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for watching Poly Talks. I was your host, Jason Clark, and we were here with Tim Gondanier running for Toronto Centre, Ward 13.